for our meditation today on the Jesus-centered Psalms, Jesus-centered Psalms, we'll be reflecting on Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verses 3 through 6 is our focus. Verses 3 through 6. Let's start from verse 5 and then come back to verses 3 and 4. Let's start from verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. First, I want to show you how this is fulfilled by Jesus as it is applied to Him. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. This was Jesus' heart. He did not get vengeance for himself. He, didn't, he did not even cry out foul. When he was being tried, when he, be, he was being whipped, he, when he was being stripped, when he was being hung up upon the cross, nailed there in shame and pain to die, he did not once say that this is unfair. He did not once cry out to be delivered. He trusted in the Heavenly Father, whose plan he was fulfilling completely leaning on the Father's will, following the Spirit's leading, every step of the way, trusting God, trusting God, even singing praises as He hangs there dying on the cross. The beauty of the faith and the faithfulness of King Jesus as He refuses to get vindication get vengeance, justification, get justice for himself. He leans in, leans in, trusts all the vengeance, all the justice to God. Not only Jesus' vision of faith as he endures the cross is seen here, there are many other aspects of Jesus that is seen here, but especially the resurrection, I think, is encompassed here as well. Because when Jesus was raised from the dead, that was God's stamp of approval on his entire life, and especially his sacrifice. It was God saying that what Jesus did was more than enough to accomplish all that he had planned for all of humanity, and for King Jesus. You see, when Jesus was raised from the dead, it declared to everyone that Jesus was right. He was right to claim that He was the Son of God. He was right to claim that He was fulfilling God's purpose. He was right when He said, kill this body and I will raise it up in three days. He was right. He was right. He was right. He was justified in His perfect life. He was justified in all of His claims. And He was declared. His righteousness was brought forth as a light, like the sun in the heat of the noonday. Romans chapter 4, though, says that he was raised for our justification. What does that mean? Jesus' justification becomes our justification. It means as we trust in him, as we leave all vengeance to him, all justice to him, in as much as we are concerned about justice, we leave all justice to him. When everything is said and done, it will be shown that it was right for us to trust in Jesus. It was right to defer vengeance to him. It was right to love our enemies instead of getting vengeance and justice for ourselves. It was right. And we will be, in Jesus, justified. Our righteousness of trusting in God, His righteousness rather than our own, will be, will be seen to have been right. Many people doubt us right now. Many people wonder if we are on the right path. That if Christianity is the real thing. We have trusted in Jesus. We have committed fully we sit under the Bible as our covenant, contract for life. 
and it will be seen by the grace of God that we were right. There's a lot of unfairness in the world, a lot of painful circumstances beyond our understanding, a lot of illnesses even, maybe nothing malicious personal that is behind it, but illnesses that we don't understand of ourselves and of our loved ones. When we had hope for healing, but healing doesn't seem to come. Or healing seems to come, but it was a false hope, or just a very temporary blessing. How should we live then in the light of the justice that is coming? Now we're at verse 3 and verse 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. I take that, that to mean this, that as we wait for God's justice, we can trust in the Lord. And we can feed on his faithfulness even now. We can see him, his faithfulness, his provision in the food that we eat. In the circumstances beyond our control and these seeming coincidences, God reveals his presence. And most of all, in the forgiveness that he has already provided for us in the death and the resurrection of King Jesus, God is faithful. Feed on that. Let that faithfulness sustain you even now. In the midst of all of the unfairness and the pain of the world, feed on the faithfulness of God. Trust in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, verse 4 says. Delight yourself in Him. Let your focus not be on your enemies, not be on your uh, painful circumstances or the unfairness of this world, but delight. Let your focus be on the Lord. Delight yourself on Him. In Him, the one who loved you enough to give Himself for you, the one who loved you enough to take on your sin upon Himself, the one who loves you enough to bring you to that place of absolute and perfect justice. He will give you the desires of your heart. He will shape your desires and give you the desires of your heart. Make sure that you keep Him first and foremost. And the, all the other needs, they fall into place. You will find Him faithful. And the ultimate need for justice will one day be clearly, clearly seen in your life as well as in the life to come. But I want to leave you with one more thought. If you delight yourself in the Lord, what will be the desire of your heart? Hmm? If you make the Lord your delight, as He should be, what will be the desire of your heart? More of Him. No? Isn't that right? Even in this life, there is no limit to how much you can know and be filled with him. Let's ask, seek, and knock together to delight in the Lord, to have our desires shaped, to delight in him even more and more. That's what we do right now, even as we wait for justice and his plan to completely unfold before our eyes. We delight in him. Mm. Never let me go 
I speak for people within the hearing of my voice when I say, that's what we really need to know. In fact, that's all we really need to know, that you are here with us. By faith we understand, we read it in your word, your spirit is with us. You are our delight. We possess the delight of our soul. What more do we need? And yet you promise that when everything is said and done, all that is unfair and broken will become undone. We look forward to that day and celebrate you now. Jesus, in your beautiful name we pray. Amen.